my kind of announcement. I learned everything from my husband. It's oh. not entirely true. First time I saw Joan, we were in a big meeting in Anaheim. 5,000 people. And before it started, people would just stand up and shout out prayers. And I was seated by her because her last, her last name was Gail and mine's Gail. And they did his alphabet. And this girl stands up next to me in front of 5,000 people. Who? That's the kind of girl I need to marry. Yeah, and I never talked to her. The next time I, the first thing I ever said to her after that was, I'm going to marry you. <laughs> that was 44 years ago. Oh, man. Hey, did anybody see? <laughs> Listen, and neither one of us has ever messed around, which is kind of something to brag about. <laughs> this day and age. But, um, uh, Anybody see this advertisement on Fox News? That, and I don't watch Fox News very much, but because of commercials, you've got to skip around a little bit. But there's this lady that it, she was doing the advertisement for Fox News, and she was saying, I've been with a correspondent with them for 25 years now. And uh, okay, and, and so she goes, but. The, the defining moment in my career as a correspondent, a news correspondent, was I was covering the expulsion of Gaza, by, of the Jewish people out of Gaza. And what year was that? Do you, does anybody know? 2005. 2005. And she says, I was covering the Israeli IDF soldiers knocking down doors and dragging women and children out of their homes in Gaza. And I remember we protested that locally yeah. around here with signs on street corners uh, in the cold, as I remember it was really cold. And, and so they're showing, on this commercial, they're showing women and children bawling and being drug out. And she goes, being a mother of two small girls myself, it broke my heart covering this story. And, and uh, she goes, that, that changed my life forever as a news person. And, and there, and, but it showed that, and it's a commercial for Fox News, and they were showing the thing that we were protesting and how awful it was. Okay, anyway, that... Ari, Ari got drug out, remember? We yes, because he Ari. refused to leave. Yeah. Yes, and what did, what did Israel gain by giving back Gaza? to Islam. Rockets. Rockets. Terrorism is all they got. There was a great Jewish settlement in Gaza and infrastructure and business economy and the Islamics went in and destroyed everything the Jewish people had built up and today it is still a slum to this day because they kicked the Jews out and gave it to Islam. Anyway, you can watch the commercial. Cool. Amen. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing kindness to the living and the dead. That man is our close relative. He is one of our Goel kinsmen, redeemers in the book of Ruth. We're almost half done, and we have come to the first mention of the Goel, the redeemer, hallelujah, which we know is, is Boaz as a picture of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. And, and so this is what happened with, when Ruth asked, uh, uh, Naomi uh, asked Ruth, where did you get all this produce? And where did you get all this blessing? And remember, the Gentile had to tell the Jew the name of the Redeemer. And that's where we were last week. Now the Jew has to tell the Gentile the whole program of redemption. She has to explain, oh, go well, you must be redeemed. See, the gospel comes through the Jew 
to the nations, but it is the gospel to the Jew first. And but then, as we as we look at the prophetic application of this, for 2,000, 1,900 years now, the goyim have been telling the Jew, what is his name? And this is just too cool because uh, we have been shouting the name for 1,900 years, but we knew we needed a redeemer because the Jew told us. It's their book, right? So it's great stuff, right? But so, so here we have a verse 20 there, and, and this is the first mention of the kinsman redeemer in our drama. And so it's a very exciting moment in our movie here, because this is produced by God like a movie or a play. So the Gentile is now taught by the Jew. One needs a Goel, and everyone needs a Redeemer, right? So he has not forsaken his chesed to the living and the dead. So what does, what, what does our Goel say to us? I will never forsake you. This is the only unconditional promise you have in this life from Yeshua. I mean, we have the, all the blessings of salvation, but the, the only thing that's unconditional is that He will never forsake you. And, and I, I will never forsake you, and my chesed is everlasting. The, ever, the chesed is the uh, loving kindness of God. So we have the Redeemer, and the chesed will never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, because we have this great Redeemer. Hallelujah. So you've got to say, Hallelujah. And if we end up in prison, we are not forsaken. We are just in a different spot. But we are not forsaken. <laughs> we might even be more swamped by the Holy Ghost there than we could ever be on the outside. And, and I had this terrible dream. I woke up in the middle of the night and I knew something was wrong in the middle of the night. I was whispering in tongues, unable to sleep, so I don't wake up the girls, you know, Joan and her little doggy. And, and, uh, uh, but, but I had this, this dream that me and Mike had escaped from prison, and I was, I went, and there was this group of people, and I'm telling Mike, this is our plan on how to get away, and there's this person standing next to us, and I, and I turned and looked up at him, and it was Sheriff Reams. <laughs> And then he, he mentions Reams today. I might have to go over there and tell Reams, I had a dream about you last night. Uh, and so when I break out of your prison, you leave me alone. <laughs> this is the word of the Lord for you. <laughs> but what does uh, Ru or Naomi mean by the living and the dead? He has not forsaken his loving kindness to the living and, and the dead. Of course, the living is, is Ruth and Naomi. Uh, they're both being blessed right now uh, in this context of our story. Um, as a kinsman redeemer, uh, Boaz would also be taking care of the dead because of the matter of the land has to be stay in the person's family. And this is one of the duties of a kinsman redeemer. The other duties of the Goel, if you want to read Deuteronomy 25, Leviticus 25, and Numbers 35, they all mention the various obligations of the kinsman. And, and this is to redeem land a poor relative had to sell. And then it's the duty of somebody in the family to redeem it back so it'll stay in the family. The land must stay in the family, Abrahamic covenant. To redeem a relative sold into slavery. And so it was their duty to to redeem them, buy them back, to avenge a murder of a relative. And then in that context, if you read the Torah, the avenger word is goel, same as the redeemer. And, and so you didn't have a court system yet, and so in the, in the event of a relative being murdered, there was the obligation to take care of that. Anyway, uh, the main one, though, is to continue the line of a dead brother's land. And that's the one that we're talking about here. So uh, the, um, remember, Tamar's husband is killed by God because he was evil. And then Onan lies with, uh, uh, Judah tells Onan, lie with your brother's wife to fulfill your duty. And, and then to produce offspring for your brother. And of course, then he died too. And so then Judah 
didn't do anything else, and so Tamar had to, you know, do what she did. But it was to keep the land in the family. It was a duty. In Deuteronomy 25, 5, it says, The widow must not marry outside the family. Her husband's brother must fulfill his duty. The first son she has shall carry on the dead brother's name, so that his name will not be blotted out from Israel. This is the law of Torah at that time. The law is the duty to continue the family line. And you know how important this was all through the Bible days. So here in Ruth, both brothers have died. Right? Both brothers have died in the first couple verses of our story. And, and in this case, the obligation or the duty would go to the next closest relative. And, and that's where we're headed here. Um, when Naomi says, living in the dead... This is what she was talking about, keeping the land in the dead brother's um, lineage would be taking care of the dead. And so here we have the first indication as, of what's coming up later. But anyway, interesting note on Deuteronomy 25.10, if a brother refused his duty, the family would be known, and this is capitalized in the NIV, the family of the unsandaled would be that, family would be known as that. Because if somebody refuses to do his duty to, to the widow, she was to take her sandal off and throw it in, in his face. And other things, if you want to read that verse. Okay, uh, now verse 21 is more blessing from the um, kindness. Then Ruth the Moabite said, He even said to me, Stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all the grain. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It would be good for you, my daughter, to go with his girls, because in someone else's field you might be harmed. Okay, so more blessing, more kindness from the Goel. Stay with my workers for the duration of the harvest, all the grain. Remember, we are at Pesach. We're at the beginning of the barley harvest here. Um, and, but Boaz is taking Ruth under his wings, clear to the end of the Shavuot harvest, which would be the wheat. So what we have here is both harvests. We're talking about uh, at least two months worth of time here that he's saying, stay in my field. And, and then the ver next verse there, it says barley and wheat. So this was the uh, him, it, he is taking care of them for this whole extended time. Now to us, you can make this, uh, how does Yeshua take care of us? He saves us at Passover, and he takes us clear to Shavuot in his first coming. He fulfilled Shavuot with the giving of the Holy Spirit. So Messiah has given us these two months worth of fulfillments of prophecy by the Messiah's work. He, cut, he dies at Passover, he's buried on unleavened bread, he raised on a feast of first fruits, and then pours his spirit out of Shavuot. That's the two months that Boaz has already committed himself to Ruth and Naomi. Yeshua has already committed that to us experientially by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we have a nice pattern here. <laughs> Try to keep up. <laughs> Naomi answers Ruth according to what she worried about way back in Moab. Remember back in chapter 1, verse 15, we, we had... Uh, look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. And, and this is when then uh, Ruth says, don't urge me to leave you anymore. But the reason he, she said go back is because you won't be safe in Israel. You can't be a cursed Moabite in a foreign land uh, and, and be safe as a, as a widow. And, I mean, it's just common sense. So, so she knew it would be dangerous for her in Israel. So she says, yes, stay with Boaz in his fields with his servants to stay safe. And, and Boaz, so now Boaz uh, has already become the protector. I love our song, Protector, because it's like God protects his people. He's the protector. He's, he's now the provider. He was the comforter. Remember, he um, spoke comfort to her heart in the cafeteria, and that, that was the uh, Nakam word, the um, name for the Holy Spirit to us. And, and now he's the Redeemer, of course, of the Moabite. So as a forerunner of Messiah, he is full of mercy, grace, favor. You got to just love these words. Our Messiah is full of mercy and grace and favor and compassion and love. In our story here, there is never one hint of any condemnation. There is no question. There is just nothing but love and mercy and grace and favor 
to Ruth, who is a cursed Moabite. Wow, that's got to make you stand up and be happy. Okay, uh, complete salvation, and it is unconditional. The one who says to each of us, come near to me. Remember the Nagas word and not Ba was, was what he said to her in the cafeteria. Nagas, come near to me. Come near to me. This is what is being portrayed to us um, early on by Boaz that represents Yeshua, unconditional love. So the last verse of chapter 2 would end the drama and it would be a great story. Um, let's see, so Ruth stayed close to the servant girls of Boaz to glean until the barley and the wheat harvest were finished and she lived with her mother-in-law. Ta-da! And the curtain falls on scene 2. Then we will open the curtain to scene 3. And this is going to be great. We won't get there all today, but but uh, I'm so excited. I keep wanting to jump ahead. But but um, this is just the halfway mark in the drama. At this and and so at this point, you would probably have intermission uh, in the theater, and you would go have omic, and you would go eat popcorn. And so at this time, we will now no. Um, <laughs> so, so, but, be, but before the curtain rises again, and in the next scene, see, we're not going to be in the fields anymore. Uh, we're we're going to be at the threshing floor. So we're 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 just getting to the good part. I, mean, I know you've been blessed already, and, and but hold hold on, you see. But before we do that, I wanted to visit uh, somebody else here, uh, since we have a little bit of time left today, that is uh, similar in story, and it has some application, as we will see, to our story. Um, and this is the story of Rahav, which you know is Rahab, and she lives just across the river from Moab, Moab. And so she's maybe even a relative of Ruth. Who knows? They're in shouting distance of each other. She lives in Jericho. Y Jericho. Who's been to Jericho? All of us have been to Jericho lots of times. It's kind of run by Islam now. There used to be a nice uh, fruit market there before it got bad. But she runs a uh, house of prostitution. So, if we jump to a side scene here, we are now in the red light district. And why is it called a red light district? Because of Rahab's red cord. <laughs> Everything comes from the Bible. Okay, so, therefore she is like Ruth, she is a cursed non-Jew. That, that's the story here. So, so in the story, this is in Yahashua chapter 2. And, and, and just like uh, our story in Ruth, uh, this, comes, this starts out with a bang. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly set two sons from um, <laughs> that word that, that means uh, acacia tree to us. <laughs> and and uh, in Joshua 2 1, if you want to look at that. Go look over the land, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. Okay, one verse, and you got the spies being sent by Yahashua into the land, especially Jericho, and all of a sudden they're in a whorehouse. <laughs> You gotta love the Bible. The drama <laughs> is just intense, right? And <laughs> so, so now remember, this this story is going to tie in to our story. If you give me a minute, so um, um, but one verse here, um, and I don't want any of you to go to one of those houses, okay? But the king, the king knows that they're there, and the king says they're here to spy us out, and and so she, the king says. Uh, give us the spies that you are hiding. And she goes, oh no, they're not here anymore. They were here, but that, now they're gone. Yeah, they're gone. They, they didn't stay. And, and uh, actually, they were on the roof. She hid them on the roof. And so she's helping the spies, right? And, and that's in, in verse 8 through 11. And, but that, oh, and then, then, it, then it tells you why she is helping them. This is cool. Why is Rahab helping the spies? She's a Yerichoite. She should be turning the spies in. 
So why does she help them? I know Yodavav has given this land to you. <laughs> she knows the Abrahamic covenant is coming true. She understands. She just, just like Ruth. Ruth calls the God of Israel the God of the universe. And says, don't ask me to leave. I'm going because I know your God is the only one true and real God. And so their stories are the same. And, and the Lord your God is, this is what she says in verse 11, the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Your God is God, you see. Wow. This is what Rahab is, is saying to the spies. Your God is the God. And so she's got faith. She's become a believer in the God of Israel. Why is she helping Israel? Because she's become a believer in the God of Israel. Now why does somebody run in a house of ill repute know about these things? She gets all the gossip <laughs> from all the customers, all the travelers. What is the big gossip of the day? Israel is on the move. And God is with them. The miracle the deliverance, the power, the glory. She hears all this stuff. <laughs> and so just like Ruth, she's desiring uh, to attach herself to Israel. She wants to be grafted in. She wants to be fellow citizen. Of course. Here's something else she wants. Maybe you can identify with this. She wants to be on the winning side. Amen. Amen. Does anybody want to be on the winning side and not dead? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey? <laughs> so she's like Ruth. It's just the same thing. And, and uh, so uh, um, Ray, Rahav, Rahab is uh, similar to us. See, we believe in the God of Israel and we believe in the book and we believe in the Abrahamic covenant. So we are helping the spies today. See, unless you're replacement and anti-Semitic, you're helping the spies. So I just wanted to bring us to this place. Because why is she risking her life to help the Jews? Because she believes. She believes. She has faith. And so now what are we doing? Have you ever heard of One Israel Fund? We give money to One Israel Fund to protect the settlers in the West Bank. We are Rahab. We're helping the Jews. The whole world wants them dead, and we got them hidden on our roof. <laughs> Aren't you proud? <laughs> I mean, so now Rahab will end up in, in Hebrews chapter 11 in the hero's book of faith. You know, Hebrews 11 is the hero chapter. You know, Rahab is in there. She's a whore. She's in, she's in the hero's book, chapter of our book, right? And so, <laughs> but doesn't God know that she's a sinner? <laughs> well, it's like I said, but we're thinking about having uh, George Gray come here. He does the Elvis impersonation, sings the gospel songs. He's an evangelist and a prophet. And, and he's famous here in Greeley. But, but some people don't like him because Elvis was a sinner. And I, and I said, you know, I like him because Elvis was a sinner. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have you ever got along with a self-righteous perfect person? Have you ever liked one? <laughs> they all are creepy. They will hurt you. So Rahav, 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Kavika used to always say, yeah, we're always in trouble, just like Jesus. What did Jesus get in trouble for? He hung out with sinners. You can't do that, you see. You'll get in trouble. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she wants um, um, to be on the winning side, and, and I just wanted to, to mention that we're doing the same thing today. Fit in the physical realm, we are saving Jewish lives by our offering to uh, Mark and, and also to the farm and, and, and all that we do to bless Israel. And when, when a Goy blesses Israel, they end up as a hero. And uh, so I just want to thank you all for who you are and, and tell you that you are a hero, a uh, righteous Gentile, as the Yad Vashem trees that surround the um, west side of Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial, it is full of thousands of trees that helped Israel. And they're called righteous Gentiles. Goim Tzadik. So, so uh, Rahab says to the spy, Swear to me by Hashem to show Chesed, because I have shown Chesed, uh, loving kindness, like Ruth and Naomi, then Boaz. The, the spies agree, our lives for your lives. And then in verse 14, when the Lord gives us the land, so everybody is in agreement here. The Lord is giving the land to the Jews. Amen? And today, let me tell you, the land is going to be the Jews. It's not a, a conditional. The Lord has given them the land, and they are going to get the land, and then they will keep the land, and we will be on the land as well because we have been with them and blessing them. Amen. So everybody fully believes Hashem is giving Israel the land, and what is in going on in Jericho is the fear of the Lord has taken the whole city. Everybody is scared of Israel. But as it re reads in James somewhere, it's, it says that only Rahab repented. Only Rahab believed the rest of them perished because they would not repent. It's one thing to recognize there's a God in the Jew. And then there's another thing to repent. And so say, say, we believe in, in the God of the Jew and we come to the cross and repent and, and, and get forgiveness of our sin. But they were all wiped out. So when the Lord gives us the land is, is what she's talking about. And so what did the, the Jew tell the Gentile to do? Put some blood on your doorpost. When God destroys Jericho, the only thing that will save you is some blood on your doorpost. Put a scarlet cord on your window. And so this is just like the Passover, which we aren't very far removed from the Passover in, in the timeline here. And so they said, we need to see the red. And so this, this is, a, but we're out of time, I've got to stop. Uh, but so this is what happens. She tells him the, to escape. She, she helps him escape. She's still helping the Jews. What if she gets caught? Ay, she's still helping the Jews. And, and they get away. And they go back and tell Joshua. And they take the, the city and the walls come tumbling down. And, and, and then put yourself in Rahab's house and all of her family and her relatives there. And, and the city walls are down. The Israelites are coming in. They're being conquered. They're being slaughtered. And Rahab is like... <laughs> she's surrounded by slaughter. Terrified. Can she trust the Jew? It doesn't look good. We're all going to die. And through the smoke and the... And the Blood and the screams and the... <clears throat> she sees two Jews coming. And let me tell you, I'm saved by the Jews. And what were the Jews looking for? We're looking for the red. We're looking for the blood. 
Were they looking at her sin? No. We're just looking for the red. We gotta find the blood. And then there'll be life. Yavarekaka Adonai Vyishmareka. Yeir Adonai Panavaleka Vakunika. Isa Adonai Panavaleka Koyosaim Laka Shalom Bashem Yeshua Hamashiach Sarha Shalom. Amen. Woo. We got the blood of the Lamb. And we got the life. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you and lift his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Messiah. Amen and amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.